The class that was presented at AU this year was covering three main parts. The first part is creating basic walkthroughs using Navisworks. The second part was using simulation of construction elements and Timeliner inside of Navisworks and also Max. And then the third part was presenting design intent using 3ds Max and Infowork 360. So to start off, the first part of this recording will be covering creating walkthroughs for your client using Autodesk Navisworks 2016. So I'm going to start off with a few screenshots here just to explain the Navisworks interface and then I'll go into the product and do a live demo on how to start using some of these tools to do a basic walkthrough. Walk so in the second tab in Navisworks we have the viewpoint tab. And there are several tools here to save out your views, play back your views as, as animations, set up your camera for the different field of views, perspectives, orthogonals, start to use some of the basic navigation tools, turn on different types of realism, whether it be third party or third, third views or first person views inside of the avatar that's shown on the screen here. And then over to the right, we have some tools for adjusting the graphics under the render style. And we can also uh, enable sectioning and import in background images to our model. If you want to look at this a bit deeper, there's a camera button here on the right with a pencil next to it to allow you to edit information in the viewport. So if you want to adjust the angle of the camera, or the height or what you want to look at, you've got X, Y, Z values here. You've also got the vertical field of view, the horizontal field of view, different offsets and lens squeeze ratios. And you can start to also adjust the linear speed as well to make that avatar walk uh, faster through the model. If we go down to the bottom right here, we have collision settings. So in the collision settings, this allows you to turn on um, different settings for collision, gravity, and auto crouch as you walk through the model. You can also adjust uh, viewing information here for the radius, height, and eye offset. Typically, the height of a person is 1.65 meters, so you can start to customize this, um, and then there's the eye offset from that head height. And you can also uh, turn on and control the third person settings here. So you can enable, enable it, auto zoom to that person. And there are several different types of avatars you can choose from. You could also create your own custom ones, save them as an NWD to the location of that avatar folder inside of Navisworks. Um, the basic tools are replicated for the navigation of the model down here on the right. So all these tools to walk through orbit zoom and pan around your model are typically in Autodesk applications over here on the right. There is a 2D navigation tool here, your pan, your window, your zoom, your orbit. When you want to bring up information on the avatar to have a walk through the model, just enable the walking uh, feature here and then the avatar will, will appear or the walking tool, tools will appear and then we can turn on the third person under realism here. Finally, uh, the render style, so if you've got a good graphics card, you can crank this up to have all the scene lights and more of a realistic sort of look and feel. There's also a couple of things to note here. Um, the main cube here is the solids in the model, but there's also vector lines and point uh, scale data here. So you've got to make sure you've got these turned on for them to register in the viewer. Um, and there's a couple others here with uh, regards to text. If you want to uh, really fine tune the graphics, so maybe you don't want to go out to another application to do uh, more photorealistic or better looking graphics, you just want to stay inside of Navisworks, that's fine. You can still get some really good results directly inside of Navisworks if you look at the Autodesk displays. So I've selected the option tools here and I've gone to the options editor down to display. And I've gone to Autodesk Effects and I've turned on Screen Space Ambient Occlusion. I've choose the Gurad uh, shader style here. You can also turn on limited lights. And then started to choose some of the settings here to make the materials look a little bit better. 
Um, there's also anti-aliasing, which is to do with the edges along the uh, sides of the solids. You can crank this up really high. However, um, just note that if you don't have a good graphics card, um, the results or the navigation through the model may stagnate a little bit. So this is, uh, for those of you who have good graphics cards, you can crank up these display uh, settings inside of uh, Navisworks and you're gonna get some really nice results. But if you don't, uh, I'd recommend just keeping these on the defaults or start to configure them so they're slightly lower. So I'm gonna go into the uh, basic walkthrough inside of Navisworks here. So this is, this is my scene setting here. I'm just using my um, mouse wheel button and um, holding down the uh, shift key and the middle wheel to navigate around the model. You can see uh, here in the viewport tab, uh, we're working in perspective. I can go to orthographic and that's gonna change my out outlook a little bit here. Um, so let's go back to perspective. Um, I can start to change my field of view a little bit. I actually like quite a wide field of view, just helps the navigation a little bit better. And um, I do have the uh, lights set up on the scene lights. If I go to full lights, um, that's not gonna change much, but headlights, you can start to see the graphics uh, looking a little bit different. And for this demo, because I've got quite a dark building, um, it might be better just to work with these, these lighting settings. And then these, these are the modes. I don't have any uh, lines or point clouds in my model, so uh, that's <coughs> full render. And now it is starting to slow down. It is loading in all the textures, but you can see uh, my graphics card is just starting to slow down a little bit. So I typically just leave it on, on shaded. Or if you're really pushed, um, you could go to maybe hidden line, and that's gonna, that should move a little bit faster. But you can see it's got that 1980s graphics there. Okay, so I've got uh, lighting, um, scene lights or headlights, and then mode is shaded. Uh, the next thing I want to do here is uh, start doing the basic walkthrough and create an animation from some of the screenshots of that walkthrough. So here we have uh, the walk tool and we're not going to fly, we're going to go down to third person. You can see there's control T for the uh, shortcut key. Okay, so just uh, if the person is looking quite right, uh, all I've done here is gone back to my collision and just clicked on the defaults. I've been playing around with some of the settings here. So. Uh, with that set, uh, I'm just going to uh, adjust uh, where I'm sort of looking from here. So, um, just adjust it, turn on my walk, and then we're going to turn on collision, gravity, and crouch. And we're just going to go forward a little bit, and now the person is uh, walking with gravity on. And when we go up to those doors, they're not going to be go through it. You can see they're trapped in the turnstile there. So we're going to just move out of that. Uh, so that's, that's essentially turning on your, your avatar to navigate around the model. Now, uh, I do want to move out of third person, but I do want to keep on um, the collision and, and gravity that's like around the model. So uh, I'm just going to uh, move across to, to a start point. And this is where we're going to go through the basic walkthrough, save viewpoints as we go, and then create an animation at the end. So here on my right save viewpoint, you can bring this up by just clicking the um, camera here. So if you ever can't, can't find this, just click the camera and it's right here. And I'll just uh, delete those ones that are created by default. And uh, I'm gonna do a new folder here. New folder and uh, I call it demo animation. And uh, we're gonna go through and start saving some viewpoints. So first one here, I want to be at the uh, Autodesk entrance. I'm gonna right click and save that viewpoint. And I'm just gonna call it um, view one, just keep on the defaults. And we're gonna walk through and go up to the door here. And this is gonna be my next view. So again, save viewpoint, view two. And to go through the door, I'm gonna turn off collision, but I wanna keep my gravity and crouch. And we're gonna be able to go through that space and into our lobby. And I'm just gonna pan uh, pan across here. Uh, so I've pan across using my uh, middle wheel button and just zoom back a little bit and say this is my steer view, say viewpoint. And then finally, I'm going to turn on, um, so collision and gravity 
and we're just going to walk up those stairs. And I will uh, just look up a little bit. And that's going to be my finishing view. So the, these are my four, four views that I've got for my animation. So view one, two, three, four. Uh, if you need to correct any of the views, so let's say this one is a little too close, you want to actually show the door. I'll just go back a little bit and I want to show that door in its entirety. Um, I can go and right click and update. And now that, that's, that's updated for that view. So if you need to fine tune anything, um, you just want to spin around a little bit here and come back, just take it back. And then that was our view three, right click and go update. Okay, so those are our four views. We're gonna now go right click again and go add animation. And this is our demo animation. And we're gonna grab those, those four views and then hold down shift to grab them all and then just drag them over the demo animation here. And then when we click on the demo animation, we've now got it highlighting inside of our um, camera viewpoint tool here. So say load and playback. When we hit play, it's gonna create a very quick animation through the model on those four points. Now we wanna slow it down because that's a little bit too fast to show a client. So like with all tools here, you can right click and go to edit and you can see it's 5.3 seconds so you really want to slow it down I would say maybe uh, 15 seconds would be enough we're not going to loop the playback and we're just going to um, keep it on synchronized angular and linear speed speeds and go OK and now when we come to play this back you can see here it's slowed down a little bit So you could even slow it down even more depending on um, what you want to show and you could also play around with the different types of graphic to start the styles here as well depending on what type of output you want. So, so with that um, we can then export it out so the final thing to uh, send this out is to uh, go to your animation and then export that animation and this is just the current um, animation we're running in viewport um, Windows AVI uh, you can go here and start to choose different types of compressions depending on what you've got installed I'm just going to leave it on the basics uh, use the aspect ratio you could drop the frames per second down to 24 uh, I'll keep it 16 here for the anti-aliasing and this is the size I'm going for uh, for the sake of time I'll put this down to 720 by um, that's going to be the default uh, I'll go explicit here, 720 by 4, 480, and go OK, and we'll run that. And I'll just pause that for the recording times here. OK, and so with that, that was about uh, five minutes of coffee break to run out these frames, and this is the result you get. So we'll play a little bit smaller. So you can see here it's 15 seconds worth of animation. The frame rate's not too bad. We could perhaps slow it down a little bit, maybe revise the aperture, but uh, it's a very quick way to get out a nice quick animation, a basic walkthrough of your model. And you can do this within minutes as opposed to hours.